Sometimes I like to talk about my emulation hobbies with my mother. I tell her about the games I have on my computer, like those old Super Nintendo games I play. And then she begins to ask me if I downloaded those game files. Well, I don't have the tools to be able to rip the ROMs from their cartridges, so I say yes, I did download these ROMs. And that's when she starts questioning the legality of what I'm doing with these game files. I make a case back as to why it's legal, but she's pretty skeptical about the whole idea. Downloading games has always been a gray area in terms of how legal it is. If you go to a company like Nintendo and say, hey, I downloaded your game, they'll probably tell you that you're breaking the law and that you have to delete the file. The term video game piracy is thrown around often in these situations, and I'm sure you're already familiar with it. But if you were to go to another gamer and say the same sentence, they would most likely make nothing of it. Heck, they might even offer to show you their own collection of ROMs. There's really no clear explanation of what games are allowed to be downloaded. While a game developer has all of the legal rights to a title, that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll fight to protect them. In many cases, it could be a financial loss for a company to prevent a game from being shared. Perhaps the game is now obsolete due to age, or it simply isn't making a profit for the company anymore. Because of this, the company may not even have any issues with consumers sharing it. While on the other hand, there are plenty of companies out there that would fight tooth and nail to prevent any of their titles from becoming shared regardless of age or profit. It's understandable that a company would defend their own works, but there are some rare scenarios in which perhaps the only way to obtain a game is through downloading it online. But where does one draw that fine line? What can be considered quote-unquote okay to download? That's what I'm wanting to talk about today. Before we get started though, let me make this clear. This is not a guide. I'm not telling you what is right or wrong, I'm merely telling you the information that I've either heard or read from other sources. Downloading video games without having purchased them is illegal. What you do with the information I give you in this video is at your own discretion. If you choose to be irresponsible with it, that's on your own conscience. Clear? Good. Let's get started. So where do we begin? Well, there's only a couple of scenarios that can go over on this topic. The first scenario is a pretty simple one. Do you already own the game? Let's say I buy a game. It can be new from a video game store, used from a garage sale, or a download from the Steam catalog. Now, in theory, by having purchased the game, I own more than just the disc, cartridge, or download. I've also purchased the rights to the game's files. With these rights, I'm theoretically entitled to do whatever I want with this game. That includes making copies of it, burning it onto multiple disks, saving the file to my PC, burning it to an external drive, or even downloading another copy of that game from the internet. Now, hold up a sec. I sound like I'm doing some pretty illegal things here, right? Well, in theory, I'm actually not. Like I said, I own the rights to these files. No matter how many copies there are or where I get these copies from, they're no different from the original one that I purchased. Now, if I'm no longer in possession of this original copy, things change. Let's say I trade in the game, give it to a friend, or have it deleted from my Steam library. Because I no longer own the original copy, I'm no longer entitled to own the files for this game. From what I've read, there's apparently a 24-hour rule to this, saying that if you no longer own the original work, you're legally required to destroy any copies of it within 24 hours. I'm not really sure if this is true or not, though. You probably notice I've thrown the word theory around a lot. I do that because, truthfully, a company can sue you for anything they feel like. Will they? Probably not. If they went after every person who's ever owned an illegal copy of a game, they'd be swimming in legal papers. But don't think that it is legal just because they aren't going after you. Companies aim for much bigger targets. Websites like MU Paradise, Cool Rom, and of course, The Pirate Bay make a much bigger impact on a game developer's sales figures. That was the first scenario. The second scenario though, well, that's a much, much bigger gray area than you would think. The scenario in question is the download of software that's been considered abandonware. The title pretty much says it all. Abandonware is basically software that is no longer supported by the original developer, is no longer making a profit, or there's no reasonable way of obtaining it. For some games, you could easily guess what falls under the category of abandonware, but here are a few examples of what are and aren't. First off, how about Super Mario World? It's an old game, Nintendo isn't making a profit on it, right? They don't sell the cartridges anymore, so downloading the game should be just fine. And that is wrong. Over the years, Nintendo has made this game available through a couple different means, including a Game Boy Advance re-release, and it also being available on the Nintendo Virtual Console. So no, Super Mario World is not abandonware. Alright, here's another example. Let's talk about one of my most favorite games, Need for Speed Most Wanted, the 2005 edition. Ever since Criterion developed the most recent Need for Speed Most Wanted in 2012, the 2005 version just dropped off the face of the earth. 
You can't buy it anywhere except for a video game or outlet store. You can't even find it on Origin. So, is it abandonware? Well, you can still find it in secondhand stores, but let's face it, EA dropped it a long time ago. They definitely aren't profiting from it, and they aren't providing any reasonable means of getting a legitimate copy. Especially for people who want to play on PC, since you'd have to get past the issue with CD keys. Do I consider it abandonware? Yes. Well, how about another game then? Well, here's another great EA title to talk about, but this one is a little more complicated. Battlefield 2142. Now, before you ask, yes, you can buy this on Origin for $10. So it's not abandonware? Well, here's the problem. Battlefield 2142 relies on servers in order to play even single player. The very first screen you encounter is to log in. GameSpy, the company that managed the servers for it, has been shut down for a couple of years now. So what does that mean then? Well, it means without extensive modding, you're not getting anywhere past this screen. Yet, EA still sells it on Origin. It's a tough call on this one. Yes, EA is technically making some sort of profit on this game, but it doesn't even work without the GameSpy servers. Abandonware sounds like a very legitimate reason to download games online, however, it's more of a gray area than the previous topic. There won't usually be an original legal copy in this scenario. Downloading a video game because it's fallen under the category of Abandonware is still illegal. Even though the game has been left behind by the developer, they still own the rights to it. The downloading of ROMs and games will always be frowned on by developers. No matter what reason you might have, you're always going to hit that legal barrier. Regardless of whether or not a company is willing to pursue you for it, downloading games without purchasing them is still an illegal act. If you decide to participate in downloading games, that's your own choice. Just know to be safe out there, and don't do anything you may regret later on. But what do you think? Do you believe that companies are too harsh when it comes to emulation? And what about Abandonware? Do you think it should be more recognized as a legal reason to download games? Post your thoughts and opinions down below. But for now, I have to go again. I have to, well, configure my emulators and try to figure out how to get Battlefield 2142 to work. This is Dr. Modelot, clocking out of the office.